I'm Mark Weiner. An elephant charged and hit my vehicle while we were filming a live safari. I'm a naturalist and a, and a presenter. I'm also a freelance guide. At the moment, I'm presenting live wildlife drives. Normally with elephant, we, we get to a comfortable position where they're not reacting to our presence, where we can watch them comfortably. Elephants do get used to game drive vehicles and very often uh, the, the guides actually know the elephant and they know their behavior and that's very important. We stopped to watch this herd of elephant and uh, well, the one old matriarch decided that she didn't want our presence or she didn't like our presence. The social structure of an elephant herd is that you have a couple of females uh, and a matriarch uh, with the, uh, the close family. Generally the, the males are kicked out after puberty and they kind of uh, herd together, but generally it's, it's a matriarch and very closely related females. When elephants charge, uh, one of the things they usually do right in the beginning is, is warn you. When she turned around and flapped her ears and she uh, it made an initial charge towards me, I reacted the only way that I knew how, which was just to stand my ground. When a, an elephant is serious about a charge, it can do it in one or two ways. One of the ways is, of course, it puts its ears flat and you can see immediately, it lifts its head up and it comes for you. Uh, that's, that's your typical, now I'm going to go straight for you. Uh, other times though, the, the, the ears might not be completely flat. One has to be very careful and one has to know the elephant to know what is its actual intentions. And she stopped the charge and she went back to the, the, the other female and the calves. So you'll see the elephant will come up, it'll lift its head, the, the ears will be forward, and that's generally a sign that you, you're getting a bit too close, back off. And I thought that we could continue around the bush, we had a little track to follow, and it was only on the way around the bush that she sort of came back after us. And I pushed record and I got my focus right and I expected her to come in. All of a sudden she was coming towards me, I didn't have time to think about this. And Mark was doing what he was supposed to be doing and he made her aware of how we were not going to move and she should probably stop and this has worked before, I've seen it work before. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. And her forehead is pretty big initially to start with, far away, it just grew into this giant grey mass. As, as soon as she was really, really close, which often works, is to shout her down and to stop her, and she didn't. And then she hit the vehicle. And all of a sudden we got the first impact. And the first thing I did was grab, I think it was the camera base and the camera. She was hitting the vehicle between myself and my cameraman, Jason. And that's when, uh, I guess, things started getting a little bit hairy. I was trying to shout at her and I was trying to stop her, and she, she came back at the vehicle and, and, and hit the vehicle, punctured the vehicle the second time. There's the door. So she was just right next to me, so it nearly got me in the head. And there's the other hole. You know, moments like that, you, your brain is working overtime. There, there are all sorts of things going through the, through the mind. Nothing else in the world matters. Only that particular incident at that particular moment. And uh, with Jason being bounced around behind the camera and the seat behind me, I was really concerned about what she was going to do to the vehicle, whether she was going to cause any serious damage. It was really quick, but it was slow motion at the same time. Till the point where she pulled away, settled herself and said, all right, this is, this is the final warning. Leave, we're gonna leave, don't follow us. I had the mind to realize that she wasn't after either one of us. Her tusks were inches from me, her head was inches from me. Uh, she could have lifted her trunk and brushed Jason off of the seat. She could have done any one of a number of things to either one of us. And that gave me the idea, or that told me, that she, she had something against the vehicle rather than anybody in particular. You don't know what has happened over the last couple of hours. You don't know what happened over the last couple of weeks or even months or even years. So there's a number of things that could uh, an irritate an elephant. Uh, the elephant might have, for instance, a toothache. And, and that would obviously mean that it loses its uh, humor very quickly. So again, you, you, you really don't want to be in the way of an elephant like this. But it's very difficult because again, you, you don't know what's happened. So the basic advice is keep your distance, keep your car running if you don't know, the, specifically if you don't know those elephant. Keep the vehicle running and, and make sure that you do have an escape route. Okay, okay. In hindsight, I, I guess, 
things that could have been done. Maybe if I'd taken her more seriously the first time and turned around and gone the other way. I don't know if that would have worked. I don't know if she would have chased us. I don't know. It could have been that she actually chased us then. And once you've got an elephant chasing you, it's a completely different issue because it's just making them more and more aggressive. It's making them more... It's, it's getting them into the, the mindset that they can chase vehicles. And I think that's one of the reasons why I chose to, to, to stand my ground. And, well, unfortunately, the Land Rover came off second best.